Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Ultimate Bucket List. And on today's show, I'm here at the stadium of Olympic de Marseille. The Stade du Velodrome. Currently known as the Orange Velodrome for sponsorship reasons, this is home to one of France's famous teams, Olympique de Marseille. Their stadium, recently refurbished, is probably one of the strangest stadiums that you'll ever come across. It's incredibly oddly shaped, and you actually have to see it in person to kind of believe that it's shaped like this. It currently holds 67,000 spectators and is the largest club stadium in France. Once you leave the metro station and walk past the shopping district, you're literally at the foot of the stadium. To start the tour, you'll need to go to gate number 18. However, so guys, here's the start of another Stadium Tours video. It's effing shut until the 8th of February, which is about a week after I leave Marseille, which is really, really annoying. This time, I did check the website and there was no indication that it was actually shut. Other than that, I didn't see any kind of closure notices or anything like that, so these guys have pulled the Milan on me. I'm seriously not joking. I've clicked on the website and even translated it to English, and it does say that it's still open from the 6th of April to tomorrow, so I don't understand why they've actually shut it early. After exploring the website a little bit, I actually found out that they're doing a match day tour at 2 o'clock the next day for the price of 35 euros, which is almost double the guided tour price. <sighs> Go on then. Okay. Second day, take two. Let's see if I can actually go in the building this time. But to be honest, I don't know if we can see it out there, but they've fenced it off. That's not a good sign. I'd be really hacked off if I can't actually access the building, even though I bought a ticket in advance. This better not be like another Milan, I swear. Fortunately, there is actually a tour going on and your security checked pretty heavily before you even enter the stadium. But the tour starts here in the underground car park, where you get to see the television crews setting up and the away team's buses and the away team's entrance. You get to walk past the inner workings of these television crews and it's pretty interesting to see how they set up for a televised game. You get a bit of a talk as to the inner workings of the stadium before they walk you through the player's entrance. So up the lifts we go and towards the lounges. Now these lounges are all painted in a bright shade of blue and they've got shirts decorated everywhere. And when you get up to the private boxes themselves, it's pretty obvious that this is part of the guided tour because there's lots of information on the walls and arrows pointing you in various directions. I'm guessing we'll do that a little bit later, but first we actually go into Puma's luxury box. The most important thing is to walk out of the door and get your first view of the stadium. I gotta say, it's an impressive looking stadium and I'm not entirely sure what to make of it. I've seen pictures of this on the TV and on the internet, but you have to actually see this place in real life to kind of understand the sheer scale of this place. It really does look like it holds 67,000 and possibly more. This tour guide, I didn't actually know what his name was, but he was an excellent tour guide. He actually offered to translate in English for me, but I didn't want to inconvenience my fellow tour mates, so I insisted he do the tour completely in French. I gotta admit, my spoken French isn't fluent, but I understood enough to kind of understand what he has to say. Anyway, once you've had a seat in the nice luxury seats, it's now time to disappear back into the luxury boxes. You get a quick look as to what a luxury box here at Olympique de Marseille looks like. We don't stay in there for very long because we then get a talk about the history of the club. Obviously this is part of the self-guided tour and he's actually telling you everything that's on the boards. Unfortunately for me, there's an English translation so even if I didn't know what he was saying, I could actually read it off the board and get the general gist of it. The history of Olympique de Marseille is incredibly interesting and there's various artifacts that you could see once you're walking around. You also get a talk as to how the stadium has changed over the years 
especially into its current form now. It's easy to forget that this is also a rugby stadium, which has held some important rugby matches and is going to be the home of the European Champions Cup in 2020. And they've been graced with some amazing players like Didier Drogba, Gabriel Hense and Eric Cantona. Their current superstar is former West Ham striker Dimitri Payet. Sorry West Ham fans. And you also get a talk about the fact that this is an excellent concert venue that holds anywhere between 50 and 60,000 spectators for a concert. So that's kind of nice. After leaving the luxury lounges, you actually get to go into the presidential lounge. Now I gotta admit, this is pretty sparsely decorated compared to the rest of the stadium, but I suppose if you're the president and you've only got a few people in your box, then this is plenty, I guess. When you walk around the lounges, it's fun to walk around the walls and learn about the various great players that have played here in the past, and it's all very interesting. You also get to see some of the silverware that they've won over the years, including various challenge trophies, the French league title, and they've even got a gold replica of the UEFA Champions League trophy. They're the only French team to have ever won it, and are the most successful football club in France. Wow, is that the Coup de France? That's tiny! Look at this wonderful, magnificent player. I'm glad they've got a picture of him up. But anyway, you walk down the flights of stairs and into the press conference area. It's a massive area where they do interviews with players, but for some reason, we're all watching a video on this guy's phone. I'm not entirely sure why we're looking at this, but everyone seems to be enjoying it, so yeah, there's that. Once we've stopped watching whatever was on that guy's phone, the tour guide explains to us that there's separate sections for TV, radios and print journalists, and that there's nowhere to hide for the players because they actually have to walk through this to exit the building. Speaking of press conferences, this is the main press conference room. And look at the state of this! Look at those sofas! These must be the most pampered journalists ever! The best thing to do once you're in here is to actually walk up on the stage and have your picture taken. I gotta admit, I actually refused to do this, but in hindsight, I probably should have had a picture taken when I'm on the stage. It's currently decked out with the France Football Federation's Coup de France graphics because there's a Coup de France match on, but in general, usually this is decked out in Olympic Marseille blue. You get a long talk in here as to what happens here in the press conference area, and at least you've got some nice comfy seats to take in all the information. Damn, I really should have had my picture taken up here, it looks kind of cool. Pfft, maybe next time. We're all leaving the press conference room now and into the players area, where once again it's decked out in this lovely shade of blue, and they've got some awesome murals dotted around the walls. It's actually pretty nice, there's plenty of photo opportunities with some of these murals here, and definitely, definitely if you're a big fan of social media, this looks pretty cool. You get to go into the player's hot and cold tub area, and this is the point whereby the tour guide tells us that there's one of these in each dressing room. This stadium has to be neutral venue, so they actually have these facilities, including this, the massage room, in both sides. However, Olympique de Marseille generally lock these facilities for away teams. You get to go into the manager's office, so this is where Andre Villas-Boas conducts his business. After that, it's time to walk out and into the home team's dressing room, which you can imagine is actually quite nice. This is actually quite a sizable dressing room, it's very nicely presented. There's a distinct absence of shirts along these lockers, but I suppose that's normal for a match day. I believe ordinarily they put the shirts up. And speaking of which, the positions of the players is actually where they sit on a match day, so in a few hours, this is where all the players will sit. They even tell you their name, number and which country that they're from especially this man right here. This blank spot, the one with the Olympic de Marseille logo, used to belong to Mario Balotelli before he acrimoniously left the club. The tour guide actually tells us a funny story about Mario Balotelli doing Mario Balotelli kind of things. But overall, this is a wonderful dressing room. It's actually really nicely presented. 
Even the shower facilities are really nice. And what's weird about this is that you actually have to walk through the showers in order to get to the warm-up area. So there's a turfed out area here where the players can stretch and warm up and kick around a little bit, or ride a bike, etc. And once again, they have one of these in each side's dressing rooms. But once you get bored of that, it's time to walk out and into the tunnel area. Now I gotta say, apart from the cool murals on the walls, the tunnel area is absolutely massive. Seriously, I mean this is possibly the biggest tunnel area I've ever come across. Apart from the one in the Stade de France, possibly, and we actually get to do a tunnel walk through these doors. Now currently everything's decked out in the Coup de France graphics because obviously there's a Coup de France match tonight. But when you walk out of the tunnel, you get to see the stadium in all of its glory. This is possibly the best view of the stadium that you're going to get, so I highly recommend that you take lots and lots and lots of pictures here. And you've got some cool photo opportunities such as here at the Olympic de Marseille dugout. Wow, there's an awful lot of seats there. And you've got every corner of the stadium to actually take a picture at, so it's actually kind of cool. I ended up taking some panoramic photos of this and it looks pretty damn awesome and you've got some excellent photo opportunities at the entrance of the tunnel. Now, this is one of the places where we don't actually stay an awful lot because the TV crews are urging us to, you know, get lost so that they can set up properly. So take one last look of the roof and the seats and the stadium before you disappear back down the tunnel. And when you do walk back down the tunnel, you'll realize pretty much all of the stuff that you've missed because you were too busy trying to get out of the tunnel and onto the field. This is the scarf wall. This is some of the scars that they've had when they've played some various teams here. And oh dear, you had to saw your wall with such filth. Tch, never mind, you'll know for next time. But anyway, you actually walk through the press conference area. Like I said, you actually need to go past here in order to leave the building and you go into the working press room. This is where journalists and photographers set up their computers and stuff to work from when they're reporting on the match. There's various photo opportunities such as cardboard cutouts and giant life-size posters, especially of these players. But once you've done that, you actually leave the building and walk past the TV crews again before they let you out of the building and that's the end of your tour. Before you go home though, I highly recommend that you check out the Olympic de Marseille shop, whereby they've got a replica dressing room, so you don't actually need to go on the tour to do this bit. And their megastore is absolutely massive. I gotta admit, I always like the Olympic de Marseille kits. They usually do fantastic kits, especially in this lovely shade of blue. If I had more money, I'd probably buy a shirt or two, but I'm operating on a strict budget here, so I didn't bother. Pretty cool shop though. Okay, just finished the tour here at Olympic Marseille and boy, that was a long tour. Seriously, I think it's two and a half hours or three hours or something like that. It was a very, very detailed tour. Um, certainly one of the longest ones I've actually been on. But yeah, overall, not too bad. But I know what you're thinking. Okay, you've done a tour on a match day. Are you not actually gonna go to a match? Hell yeah, I am. So, it's several hours later and it's night, and I've returned to the stadium to watch the Coup de France match between Olympique de Marseille and RC Strasbourg. Ooh, let's check out what junk food that they've got. French baguettes, French baguettes, and let me guess, French baguettes, right? Oh wait, no, these burger vans have got beer on draft. That's pretty cool. The walk towards the Orange Velodrome is actually quite nice. You get to see the stadium in all of its lit up glory, but admittedly, there's not that much to actually do out here. So, into the security bit you go, whereby you'll be checked for a match ticket, and you'll be searched pretty heavily. So bear that in mind when you come here, that you'll be searched pretty invasively before they let you anywhere near the stadium. Once you get past security, there's really not that much to do out here either, so I decided to go in and found that there was really nothing to do there. So it's pretty sparse. When you actually do go into the stadium, that's when it hits you that this place is absolutely magnificent. It looks completely different to when it did four hours ago, especially when it's lit up and the music's blaring and the TVs are working. Yes guys, I did wear an Olympic Marseille thing just to kind of fit in. 
but honestly, this place looks a lot different during the day than it does during the night. And at night, it actually looks a lot better, so that's cool. And believe it or not, my seat is all the way down there, right on the halfway line, so that's pretty damn awesome. I'm actually looking forward to this game, I must admit. I've not watched a great deal of French football before, so this will be, uh, be a first for me. I actually got bored just waiting for the match to start, so I ended up walking around the stadium to try and take pictures from different areas. And I gotta say, this is a fantastic stadium to take pictures of. It's very pretty. And I'm sure if you're a big social media guy, this will work for you. My seat near the halfway line was actually pretty good, and I gotta admit, the view from here is actually pretty damn nice. For some reason, even though this is a cup game, the stadium is half empty. Never mind about that, the pre-game light show is just about to start. I don't understand why we don't have this more in England. The match is almost ready to begin, and for some reason they're lighting fires in the corner of the stadium. Quick wave to our favourite player, number 10. And once the match begins, the noise is absolutely staggering. So even though there's not many people here in the stadium today, the atmosphere is pretty damn good, especially from either side of the stadium where their ultra-hardened fans sit. What's French football like? Well, I gotta admit, they stand off each other a lot more than in the Premier League, and they seem to be on the floor a little bit more. But other than that, the standard here is actually quite good. It was actually a very entertaining game, really enjoyed this, and holy crap, they just scored! What a goal that was! Shortly, they made it 2-0, thanks to our favourite player in the whole wide world. I know West Ham fans think that he's a bit of a traitor, but you've got to admit, he's a hell of a player. By the way, if you want something to eat at half-time, that's the queue, and if you want to have a wee, that's the queue also, so bear that in mind if you are hungry or thirsty at half-time. The atmosphere around the stadium is actually pretty good, there's no animosity, it doesn't feel aggressive, and everyone is here to have a little bit of a good time, which I'm all for. And oh, there's more players on the field, yay. Olympic de Marseille eventually ran out 3-1 winners. Oh, it's full time, time to get the hell out of here. It's pretty pleasant to actually leave the stadium. It's not at all crowded, people aren't elbowing each other, and the metro, whilst it was busy, was definitely, definitely usable. Not packed into like a can of sardines in Manchester. I was thoroughly surprised. I highly recommend that you take in a game here at Olympic de Marseille if you get a chance to do so, especially if the tickets are just 15 euros for a spot on the halfway line. Okay, Nin, I'm sold. What do I need to do? Well, you need to come here to the Orange Velodrome. It's situated very conveniently on Metro Line 1, and if you have a match ticket, depending on which side of the stadium depends on which metro station you get out of. But if you're not doing any match and you're just doing the tour, the entrance here is at gate 18, so bear that in mind if you do come just to do the tour. The cost of the tour? Obviously guys, I overpaid to do the tour on a match day and it was 35 euros. Ordinarily, the self-guided tour is 18 euros and I highly recommend you do that over the guided version. If you are an Olympic Marseille fan and you do understand French, the guided tour does come highly recommended, but me as a neutral, the guided tour is just fine. If you want to actually see a football match, I highly recommend that you check out their website because all of the matches you can buy tickets from there. My ticket, literally on the halfway line, was just 15 euros, so definitely, definitely value for money. The atmosphere was fantastic, and I highly recommend that you do this if they are actually playing whilst you're in Marseille. Is there anything else I need to know? Yes. Photography and videography are perfectly acceptable, either on the tour and during the match. And drinking and smoking is technically allowed whilst you're watching the game, which both are not legal in England. However, the smoking can get a little annoying, especially if you get a lady like this who's blowing smoke in your general direction. Some people don't mind that, but it can get quite annoying if you don't like smokers. If you're doing the tour, I highly recommend that you take the self-guided tour, especially if you're not fluent in French, as the signs are in English. But if you are an Olympic de Marseille fan and you do speak French, the guided tour does come highly recommended, albeit it's a little long. 
So whereabouts on the hierarchy of your stadium tours does this go? Somewhere in the middle. Um, I quite like this place. Um, the stadium was fantastic. The tour guide was great. Um, it took almost three hours to see absolutely everything. And to be honest, is there better stadium tours out there? Yeah, there is. But this one's actually quite good compared to the grand scheme of things. It's certainly a lot better than some of the other tours I've done. So guys, I highly recommend that you do the tour here at Olympic Marseille. And if you are here for a few days, I highly recommend that you check out my other video, The Guide to Marseille, right here. So guys, if you've enjoyed my stadium tour footage or match footage here at Olympic Marseille, let me know in the comment section below. And if you do like this sort of thing, obviously be sure to like, share and subscribe. And if you've got any other ideas, tweet them at me or comment on the comment section below and I'll certainly consider that. So guys, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next episode. Get off at Rondon. Just waiting for these motorbikes to go past. Ruining my audio. Uh, my oh, stop, stop, stop it.